G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. We've been called down to our Wyndham store this morning really early before anyone else is here because we have an emergency. One of our biggest aquariums is right about to burst at the seams. Now we have to avoid this from happening. So we're gonna show you exactly how we know that this uh, disaster is about to happen and what we're going to do to stop it. The tank that we're worried about is this tank up here. It's what we call our live rock tank. Years ago, it had live rock in it, and it's one of the biggest in the store. It's also the highest in the store. It, hot, it stands seven feet at the top, and holding a thousand liters, if it were to burst, it would completely flood the store. So I'll show you exactly how I know that we have this imminent disaster. And the trick is we look at the silicon lines. The tanks here at Gallery Aquatica have been designed specifically so that we can see the silicon lines. And what I mean by silicon lines, the seam where the base plate of the tank meets the sides of the tank. And this is what the silicon line should look like. It should be uh, an evenly, uh, an even thickness silicon line. And most importantly, the color should be homogenous through the silicon. Now, as you can see over here, there's a little bit of a dip in which the substrate, the sand, dips below the top of that silicon line, and that's a bit of a problem. And over here, it happens again, but the problem that we're really looking at today is between this section here and this section here, and we have bubbles in the silicon. We have uh, the substrate is falling between the side of the tank and the base plate. You can see it really dips down here, but the most worrisome thing of all, we have a large bubble developing that goes for about over a foot, so probably 30, 40 centimeters, and the, the substrate has fallen down to, to meet that bubble. And what that means is that this front uh, face of the tank is actually pulling away off the base plate. And if we were to leave this as it is, at the point where the substrate falls down into the bubble and the bubble uh, extends to the base of the tank entirely, water will start to come out of the tank and it will start dribbling down. We wouldn't see the tank bust out entirely, the glass wouldn't break, but we certainly would have the, the entire volume of the tank on the floor. So we're gonna show you two things that we're going to do to fix this problem with the tank and avoid a catastrophe in the store. So to explain how we're going to fix this problem with the tank, uh, I, I, I'd like to show you a demonstration. And uh, if you imagine that this box is the aquarium, the problem that we have is that because of the pressure and the length of the tank, the sides of the tank, so imagine this is the front side and this is the other, are actually bowing out. And so the two things that you can do to rectify this problem, the first is to install a cross bridge. So a piece of glass that runs across the top of the tank, and this will hold those sides in place so that they can't pull away. Now, this is something that I've actually already done on this tank. And I did this about a year ago, once I started to worry about the volume and the thickness of the glass. And so that has certainly helped. And I think were it not for this cross bridge, the tank would have already leaked. However, what we've seen today with the silicon line is definitely a worry, and, it's, and this is why we're going to do the second thing that will uh, help to save this tank and reinforce it. We're going to put blades on the bottom of the tank to reinforce the silicon line. Now, the problem that we have is this tank is running. There's fish and corals, and whilst we have removed some of the animals, we are going to have to work in the tank. We don't have time to drain it down. And so I have a special silicon that we're going to be able to use to install these blades to reinforce the tank and save it. So let's have a look at the silicon that we're going to use for this job. So this is the silicon we're going to use. It's called Selly's Marine Flex, and it comes in black or white, and it will set perfectly fine underwater. So it's something that we do use in quite a few applications when you can't actually drain your tank out and dry it down. 
Um, so the fact that we have access to this is really the reason why we're going to be able to save the tank. So we'll have a quick look at the tank and what we need to do to prepare the surface before we glue our blades in place. Really the only thing I need to do to prepare this surface is going to be to clear away the substrate so that I have a nice uh, easy flat surface to glue our blades on. And I've got um, the markings here. I have specifically had these blades made to be two short lengths instead of one longer length. Um, I think that'll be easier to put them in place. And really, I think it's fair to say this tank either should have been made out of uh, thicker glass, which would have increased the price of this tank tremendously, or what would have been better would have been if we had this tank made with blades internally uh, from the start. And if we had blades that uh, ran the length of the tank um, and were 10 or 12 mil and uh, you're right in this edge, we certainly wouldn't have had the problem. We probably wouldn't have even needed to put this cross bridge in place. But this is where we're at. We have to avoid a disaster. And that was actually a bit easier than I was expecting. Um, I think I've got all of the sand out. Even the sand that had dipped below the, the silicon line uh, seems to be clear of it. So we'll get our blades and we'll apply the silicon. So I'm gonna line the first blade up with this line here. There's really no bubbling on the silicon line from uh, this green marking onwards. So I'm gonna put it here and I'm going to go maybe a little bit crazy with the silicon. Um, I'm going to put a line down here. I'm really gonna focus on this edge that's gonna go in. So this is a patch, so I'm not really focused on it looking too good. This is gonna spew out silicon everywhere, but this is the line that I'm most interested in uh, on this edge. If I can get my corking gun to work. Okay, this line here. And I'll just remind everyone that I'm not a tank maker my siliconing is not perfect. However, I'm gonna save this tank. All right, so I've got silicone on this edge and on this edge. So when I squeeze them into place, we're gonna have an unbroken white line of silicon with the Marine Flex just in here. So that's it, and uh, it's pretty messy. <laughs> but as I keep saying, it's all about saving the tank today. And I think what I'll probably do in the future is just get in there with a, a razor blade and just tidy up some of these little uh, you know, waves that have come up and um, just make it look a little bit nicer. Um, potentially, we could add more blades, but as I said before, th this tank, doesn't really need to last forever. And if we did want it to last forever, we'd probably empty it out and do it properly. 
but uh, this is going to save the tank. So I'm just glad that we've got to it in time that it hasn't burst. One thing I haven't mentioned about this tank is its age. And this tank is actually 13 years old. So it is quite an old tank. And with age, of course, problems like we've seen today with the silicon line are more likely to occur. But I really have to say that the moral of the story is to ensure that the tank that you put in your home is properly engineered. And one of the most important aspects of the engineering of a tank is the thickness of the glass. And I did touch on the fact that this tank probably should be made out of thicker glass. Um, however, the other aspects of engineering the tank is to ensure that the bracing is adequate. We really should have had a top brace on this tank and we should have had blades on the inside that run the length of the tank. Now, of course, everyone wants huge tanks these days and they want to do them as cheap as possible. Um, and that means using as thin glass as possible. But you really have to consider that if a tank does burst in your house, it's going to be an incredibly expensive and inconvenient thing to happen. So I would always ensure that your tank is engineered properly from the start. But anyway, that's today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Hopefully we've saved this tank and we'll be able to come back to our Wyndham store and show you this in future episodes of Gallery Aquatica TV. But that's it for today's episode. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!